So previously, we looked at how to implement a function in MIPS, right? How do we model the basic um, kind of functionality outcomes of a C function using MIPS? And what we learned is that it's convention in MIPS to um, have arguments that are passed in through registers A0, A1, A2, and A3. Hence, when you look at our, our data sheet, you'll see that the name of the register is listed here, um, A0 through A3, but its use is by convention arguments. So, and what's great about that is that um, if you honor those conventions, you, you know, when you can, you don't have to use additional memory or you don't have to use a stack to save um, registers or to spill registers over into and then pull them back out. Um, so, and that's what this uh, leaf1.asm does. Where you create a label and then you do a jump and link within your code to get to that label. It does the addition of A0 and A1, and then A2 and A3, and then it puts the value in V0. So essentially that's returning the value. And then you do a JR, and that returns to the value that's inside of register RA. And register RA will be the um, address that, uh, that appears just after the jump and link. So that's what we saw earlier. Now, what if in your function, you are using registers and you don't want to disrupt the registers um, A01, A2, A3, T0, and so right? You have a host of registers. We only have a limited number of registers. We don't know who's using those registers. We don't know if the calling function or the function that called um, him is using those registers. So, Ideally, what we can do is take the registers that we're going to use in our function, put them in, save the values in them, and then go ahead and reuse them, and then replace the original values back in and return. So the mechanism for doing this is called a stack. Um, and a stack is simply a space in memory, a space in memory that will be used to um, place the information, place our register values and save them in there. So every time we want to save a value, we're going to place it onto the stack. And each time we place a value onto the stack, that stack continues to grow. So the more function calls you have, the more your stack may grow. There is, right? Each time you call a function, you're going to possibly save a number of registers. And then when you're done, you're going to undo, right? You're going to return those values, kind of pull them out of memory using something like a load word to get those values out of memory. And then, uh, and then your function can return with a JR. So the mechanism to help us do this is um, a register that points to memory that is really a, a dynamic type of memory. It gets used, and then when our function is done, we, it comes, um, it's released. When we call a function, it gets used, and when a function is done, it's released. There's, so it's dynamic in that it's always changing. In addition to that, Whenever you would use a malloc or which is you know in C to allocate new memory, or if you would use something like ArrayList equals new ArrayList, you're requesting that an object be created, and that is uh, requesting memory from the heap. So the stack from up top and then uh, the heap from the bottom are kind of managing and utilizing this extra space. It's dynamic. It's changing based on the needs of the program. So the stack is just ultimately just a scratch pad for preserving registers and storing functions. So even though we may think of a stack as, as you kind of put things one on top of the other, it goes up from the bottom upward, our stack is really kind of an upside down stack. And it gets, as it gets larger, the stack pointer 
points to smaller and smaller values. So let's take a quick look at what that might uh, look like. So I know that I'm going to call a function that's going to add um, y plus z to the square of x. So we're going to jump and link to some square. The arguments being passed in are being passed in through a0, a1, a2. And then once jump and link is done, the next line of code is going to be what we're seeing here is line 15, where we take the answer, um, the address of the answer rather, which is um, a buffer here where it's just 40 bytes of empty memory. We take the address and put that into the T0, and then we store the result, which is in V0, into that answer space, and then we can exit. So in, in our function, call it sum square, um, there is a prologue, some preliminary steps, and then there's an epilogue, some steps on the other side. Now those two, the prologue and the epilogue, are really mirrors of one another. The first one is relying on storing the information, store word, store word. And then the other one is relying on retrieving that information that's been placed um, and in the stack. Now, we also don't know if somewhere in our code, it might have branched off and gone somewhere else. So whenever that, and in fact it does, jump and link. All right, so we have some square, but some, in squ some square is actually calling jump and link to, it's calling multiply which will destroy the RA register. That means that when we return, we want to make sure that the RA register contains the value that was originally placed in there when some square was, was, uh, was called. So we're going to save that value, the return address, so that when we're ready to go home, we can just pull it out using load word and then jump to that return address. Also, since we're using A0, A1, and A2, um, we're going to go ahead and store those values. And then we can use them as we wish, overwrite them if necessary, and then restore them. So let's take a quick look at what that might look like. You can see here that we load up those values. A0 gets a three. A1 gets a 2, um, and A2 gets a 5. And so you can see what those values are over here off to the right here. Now, jump and link is going to jump to a label, and that label, um, some square, has a particular address. Let's go ahead and show that by showing labels and windows. So some square exists in my text segment at 40020. So it exists 400020. So we're going to jump there and start um, our function. Notice that the return address right now is sitting at zero. Return address is sitting at zero. So when I do a jump and link where I'm sitting at um, address C or 12. I'm just going to do one step. So now I've done a jump to the function called sum squared. But look over here, my return address contains one zero. So even though I took off from um, this line of code here at C, I'm returning to this line of code here which is a hex 16. So I went from 12, and then when I want to return, I want to return to the subsequent line of code, which is 12. So that's what jump and link does. It, it populates return address with the value at which the jump and link occurred, plus four. So it adds four to it. Now the stack pointer is pointing to a space in memory. Let's look at that. It is 7FFFEFFC, 
and then I'll make space. I'll push that pointer down by adding negative 16 to it. So you're going to see that that is now changed. And then in that space in memory, based on where the stack pointer is, you should see, right, I've changed this down here at the bottom so that we can see the memory. We're looking at a different place in memory. I can store the current value of the return address into a place in memory and then store a zero, a two, and those values are now, as you can see, as this turned blue, they were placed in memory. So I'll go ahead and continue the program, do the addition, jump and link to multiply. Notice that my return address is currently 40010, but I'm doing another jump and link. And so that return address is going to be different now because it's a function that's calling another function do the multiplication, get the value, and then return. And now I can let my program continue on, right? It's sitting here and it's going to restore the values back into A1, A2, and V0. Um, actually, no, at this point, we're just doing the addition. But then here is when we start to restore the values and my return address, which is currently sitting at, you know, you can see a 3C here, but I needed to restore it to what it originally was. And there's my one zero. Now, when I do my JR, I go back and I have an answer. So that answer, which is sitting inside of V0, is over here and what do we see a 12 so what is that that's a hex 12 which is 16 and 2 that's 18. so i'm going to go ahead and let this continue on it'll step step and it'll store that 18 right as we request it we're going to store that 18 into a space in memory um, that we set aside here called answer Answer exists at the very beginning of memory, so I'm expecting this to change colors on the next step because of the store, and it does. And so we have our answer. And then we can exit from there.